Welcome to Outside the Lines. I'm Ryan Smith in for Bob Lee. Well, as the world turns, so turns the world of the NFL. Our big story, the ongoing soap opera that is the NFL. Well, just when you thought the league would return to normal after the, Ze the Ezekiel Elliott suspension for alleged domestic violence was back in place, not so, as controversy continues to dog the NFL. Owner infighting is making the league look like UFC fight night. As the Zeke's Cowboys took on the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday, it felt like you could cut the tension with a knife between Jerry Jones and Atlanta Falcons owner Arthur Blank, the former threatening to sue the latter and his fellow owners over Roger Goodell's still being negotiated contract, sidestepping the NFL owner hug and handshake kumbaya moments that typically happen at games, instead sticking to their respective sidelines, never crossing paths. Making uh, too much of Mr. Jones versus Mr. Blank, or are we making exactly the right amount of it? Well, I think uh, uh, Mr. Blank got the, uh, got the upper hand tonight, and uh, uh, I think that's a, a good place to uh, put it. We're playing a Super Bowl team, and uh, uh, they took us to the woodshed, and, uh, and uh, uh, I, there's, there's not going to be any excuses for me. Uh, we just didn't block them up, and I thought that we had a chance uh, to um, maybe come in here and uh, win a game, but they did a good job. Did y'all speak at all? I never talked to him today. Is that unusual? Uh, I don't know about that. I, we don't play that much, you know, so uh, I don't. I don't know about that. But I don't know about that. Make any thing of that. And Goodell isn't making things any easier, reportedly demanding nearly $50 million in annual salary, a private plane, and lifetime health insurance. Now, NFL spokesman Lockhart debunking the report that Goodell submitted this proposal, saying of the report, those trying to peddle that nonsense are profoundly misinformed or deliberately trying to mislead. Well, maybe that's something you can't say about Colin Kaepernick. He's not speaking a word, but he's saying volumes with his image today. Gracing one of the four covers of GQ's Men of the Year issue, He's being lauded as a citizen of the year for his part in the movement during the national anthem. It's been a thorny issue for the NFL. And that's just off the field. On it, the league's concussion protocol is facing scrutiny. On Thursday, Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson allowed to re-enter the game without being brought to the locker room and cleared by doctors. Sources telling ESPN that that move violated the NFL's concussion policy. Now, fast forward to Sunday. The Colts to Kobe Brissett absolutely clocked on that hit you see there holding his head afterwards twice evaluated on the sidelines went back in the next series played the rest of the game afterwards promptly being put in the protocol and that all happening as martellus bennett was back on the field playing for the patriots fresh off alleging green bay packers doctors misdiagnosed his shoulder injury pushing him to play then waving him while packers players like aaron Rodgers and jordy nelson defended their team doctor's integrity Yes, yeah, another Manic Monday. Joined now by those peddlers of nonsense, ESPN insiders, yep. Adam Schefter, Chris Mortensen. Uh, okay, guys, let's start with this whole Jerry Jones, NFL, Roger Goodell, Arthur Blank. W what's the latest on all that? Well, just uh, the compensation committee chaired by Arthur Blank, oh. six-man committee, Jerry no longer the ad hoc seventh uh, member, being, having been fired about a week and a half ago from that position by Arthur Blank, the chairman. Uh, they have had that conference call today. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get an update later on the status of Roger Goodell's contract talks. I think uh, we, we, we felt like it was about, what, two to four weeks away from being finished. They had details to work out, but they have had the call. We're waiting to uh, get some news out of it, or if there's any real news. And I think what's interesting about the state of the contract, and for all we know, they approved it today and mm -hmm. pushed it through, but that was the sense that it was two to four weeks away. But I think over the summer there was a consensus that this was definitely getting done. And now I think everybody believes it's going to get done. But with all the uncertainty, with everything happening the last couple of weeks, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. Now, again, maybe the compensation committee today took rash action and said, we're going to just push this through. Right. We'll wait and see later on. But I think that there's been enough noise made from enough opponents that it has introduced some uncertainty and some concerns that other people around the league have about this proposed extension for Roger Goodell. And what about this proposed, I should say, counter-proposal, this idea that he's asking for nearly $50 million in the plane and the health insurance? NFL is pushing back on that, but uh, as you guys reported, this is, this is a real counter-offer. Let's here. remember that this is a negotiation. Mm -hmm. So you know, if we were negotiating, you're, you're, you can ask for anything you want. Oh, right? yeah. This goes back to the, around the 1st of August, according to the source I had, and I've kind of had verification there was definitely a a one written counter proposal from Roger Goodell's representative. And that package, and that's the key, package, we're not saying guaranteed money, was valued at $49.5 million per year with some perks like private use of a jet for a lifetime and private 
uh, and health insurance for a lifetime. That was a package. That was a counter proposal. Doesn't mean that's where they're at today, mm -hmm. but there's no question that our sources are adamant. In fact, when we said 50 million, it was like, hold on, it was 49 and a half million exactly. at yeah. the time back in August, and negotiations have gone forward, and it is bonus-based and incentive-based. Uh, the details of that is what Jerry Jones is contesting. Right, that's what he was asking. And I think ultimately when it gets done, what it may settle in at is a number closer to $40 million right. a year yeah. in incentives. But that was what he initially was asking. And there are even people in Roger's corner who felt that he was asking for too much, who were put off by those requests. And there was an owner this weekend that used the words, his words, not mine, offensive and unseemly. About go. the request. Jerry Jones, basically, Ryan, he, what he wants, and he, he stated, this, stated this both pub publicly and in a letter he distributed to owners, he wants transparency. And even though in May they authorized the committee to finish this deal, and that's what they're trying to do, mm -hmm. he's basically saying there have been so many different circumstances, so many other problematic areas that he believes that, that they need to be transparent in every detail of this contract, and he doesn't believe that is happening. We'll see what the comp compensation committee <laughs> And by the way, forward. it's negotiation one on one. I can tell you, yes. as a lawyer, you ask for the big number and you end up somewhere in between. You don't ask right. for the little number or the number that you're already getting. That's, Maybe that's what's happening right. here. All right, let's talk Adam about this. That. Don't, 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 don't tell that nonsense <laughs> yeah. there, Ryan. <laughs> Jeff, you got the big number. Oh, from really? What I heard. Yeah. So you asked for the moonshot. All right. So, Russell Wilson, let's talk about the Seahawks now. How much trouble are they in? Listen, I think that there was a breach of the policy that's in place by a number of different people, not just the Seahawks. Essentially, the NFL has people in place to safeguard that what happened on Thursday night doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it did. And now this week, the Seahawks, the NFL, the sideline consultants, the medical people involved in this particular case are all going to come under scrutiny and be involved in intensive calls with the league office to try to figure out what went wrong here. Look, when you're trying to change the culture surrounding concussions, you can't have these types of incidents and the type of incidents that occurred over this weekend. This was not a great weekend for the league in terms of the, the concussion protocols. And so there will be discussions this week. But as one person said to me over the weekend, and the league has said, we have not done any calls, we have not done any, uh, we have not reached any conclusions. But one person said, yes, involved in this case, the Seahawks violated policy, and we'll see what results from that. And I've been told there's going to be intensive interviews of people involved in this case. There are independent neuro trauma uh, specialists on each sideline. And that they're just part of the, 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 the tiers that you have to go through. And so whether, I haven't gotten it defined that the Seahawks are in trouble, but what about the independent neuro trauma? Did, did the Seahawks bypass it? Did he say, hey, no, stay in there? Uh, but obviously it was a bad look for the league and there is a, a strong intensive review of this situation. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about Colin Kaepernick. So Colin Kaepernick today, on the cover, that cover coming out on GQ, naming him Citizen of the Year. This is a big thing, by the way, for folks who don't know this issue. And, you know, it's interesting because in the article it talked about how Colin Kaepernick hasn't been speaking, that that's on purpose. The reporter seeming to say that his power resides in not saying something. That continues the discussion. And that essentially is sort of bolstering his case. How would he benefit from speaking at this point, do you think? Well, I think... I think mean, just people would like to hear from him in terms of his thoughts and passion for football. That's, you know, occasionally you hear some of that from football teams is we're not sure how passionate he is about playing football, of course, or that he wanted to be a starter, certainly. We're way down the road on that one. As far as Citizen of the Year, remember Time Magazine has had many controversial figures who've been Citizen of the Year. Joseph Stalin one yeah. year, Adolf Hitler one year, and I'm putting him in that category. Yeah. But, but, you know, those things happen. It's somebody who has basically initiated a conversation culturally and that's why they are named Colin Kaepernick but I'd like to hear from him it doesn't have to, you know I think I think a lot of the sporting world would like to hear from him to talk about a number of things not just the social causes but even yeah. the football component do you of this. think this satisfies anyone in terms of him, in terms of his presence this being his mode of speaking in a sense there's a big I, I, photo listen, spread about I, how I, his I, I, think, yeah. I think I think people want more, mm -hmm. and they would like to hear his thoughts. He's been steadfast all along. Give him less, they want more. He embraced this because he tweeted something, basically, thank you. I mean, basically accepted it uh, you know, and, and tweeted something about it. Okay, let's talk about Martellus Bennett. This is just an odd situation. What is going on with him, the Packers? Now he's playing for the Patriots. I mean, he came out pretty strongly against them, and you got Rodgers and others backing up the doctors. Yeah. What do you know? He's been playing with a torn labrum and a torn rot rotator cuff, and he wanted to have surgery. And I think, essentially, as he pointed out in his Instagram post last week, 
he was concerned that the Packers, I think he thinks the Packers were concerned they were going to have to put him on IR, injury reserve at the end of the year, and owe him more money. So he believes this was a financial decision to part ways with them, to give him the failure to report uh, disclose a prior, injury, yeah. uh, f- a failure to disclose injury. But again, they were unwilling to move on with him. The Patriots claimed their own waivers, put him out there last night, and here we go. It says the Packers, Aaron Rodgers among them, have steadfastly yeah. defended their team doctor, Dr. Yeah. Robert McKenzie, who really does have an outstanding reputation on the conservative side, maybe the most conservative team doctor in terms of pushing people out there to play when they are hurt. What makes you think what really happened here? He said, That's he right. said That's a lot of things in the NFL going that way these days. Usually. These guys, the two all pros of ESPN. Mort, Adam, thank you so much. Thanks, we'll see you on later tonight, by the way, Monday Night Countdown. Watch for that. And coming up, college football craziness has Paul Feinbaum dancing. And wait till you hear his prediction for the playoff Final Four.